The explicit reason was to swiftly end the war with Japan, but it was also intended to send a message to the Soviets. Ever since America dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan on August 9, 1945, the question has persisted, was that magnitude of death and destruction really needed to end World War II? American leadership apparently thought so. A few days earlier, just 16 hours after the USB-29, Bomber in Olegei shocked the world by dropping the first, a bomb known as Little Boy, on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The White House issued a statement from President Harry S. Truman. In addition to introducing the world to the previously top secret atomic research program known as the Manhattan Project, Truman doubled down on the threat that nuclear weapons posed to Japan, America's only remaining adversary in the war, if the Japanese did not accept the terms of unconditional surrender drafted by Allied leaders. In the Potsdam Declaration, Truman wrote, They may expect a reign of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. But even as Truman issued his statement, a second atomic attack was already in the works. According to an order drafted in late July by L.T. Chen, Leslie Groves of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, director of the Manhattan Project, the president had authorized the dropping of additional bombs on the Japanese cities of Kakura, present-day Kitakyushu, Niigata, and Nagasaki as soon as the weather permitted. Nagasaki wasn't the original target. Early on the morning of August 9, 1945, the B-29 known as Boxcar took off from Tinian Island in the Western Pacific Ocean, carrying the nearly 100-pound plutonium-based bomb known as Fat Man toward Kokura, home to a large Japanese arsenal. Finding Kokura obscured by cloud cover, the boxcar's crew decided to head to their secondary target, Nagasaki, Fat Man, which detonated at 11.02 local time at an altitude of 1,650 feet, killed about half as many people in Nagasaki as the uranium-based little boy had in Hiroshima three days earlier despite a force estimated at 21 kilotons or 40% greater. Still, the effect was devastating. Close to 40,000 people were killed instantly and a third of the city was destroyed. This second demonstration of the power of the atomic bomb apparently threw Tokyo into a panic for the next morning brought the first indication that the Japanese Empire was ready to surrender. Truman later wrote in his memoirs on August 15, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's unconditional surrender, bringing World War II to a close. Official a bomb justification save us lives. According to Truman and others in his administration, thirds of the atomic bomb was intended to cut the war in the Pacific short, avoiding a U.S. invasion of Japan and saving hundreds of thousands of American lives. In early 1947, when urged to respond to growing criticism over the use of the atomic bomb. Secretary of War Henry Stimson wrote in Harper's Magazine that by July 1945 there had been no sign of any weakening in the Japanese determination to fight rather than accept unconditional surrender. Meanwhile, the US was planning to ramp up its sea and air blockade of Japan, increase strategic air bombings and launch an invasion of the Japanese home island at November. We estimated that if we should be forced to carry this plan to its conclusion, the major fighting would not end until the latter part of 1946, at the earliest, Stinson wrote. I was informed that such operations might be expected to cost over a million casualties to American forces alone. The other reason? Get the Soviet Union's attention. Despite the arguments of Stinson and others, historians have long debate whether the United States was justified in using the atomic bomb in Japan at all, let alone twice. Various military and civilian officials have said publicly that the bombings weren't a military necessity. Japanese leaders knew they were beaten even before Hiroshima as Secretary of State James F. Burns argued on August 29, 1945, and had reached out to the Soviets to see if they would mediate impossible peace negotiations. Even the famously hawkish General Curtis LeMay told the press in September 1945 that the atomic bomb had nothing to do with the end of the war at all. Statements like these have led historians such as G. R. Alperovitz, author of the decision to use the atomic bomb, to suggest that the 
Bond's true purpose was to get the upper hand with the Soviet Union. According to this line of thinking, the United States deployed the plutonium bomb on Nagasaki to make clear the strength of its nuclear arsenal, ensuring the nation's supremacy in the global power hierarchy. Others have argued that both attacks were simply an experiment to see how well the two types of atomic weapons developed by the Manhattan Project worked. Admiral William Bull Horsey, commander of the U.S. Navy's Third Fleet, claimed in 1946 that the first atomic bomb was an unnecessary experiment. The scientists had this toy, and they wanted to try it out, so they dropped it. Was a second nuclear attack necessary to force Japan's surrender? The world may never know. For his part, Truman doesn't seem to have wavered in his conviction that the attacks were justified, though he ruled out future bomb attacks without his express order the day after Nagasaki. It was a terrible decision, but I made it. The 33rd president later wrote to his sister Mary, I made it to save 250,000 boys from the United States, and I'd make it again under similar circumstances. Photos Hiroshima and Nagasaki before and after the bombs. Before the 1945 atomic blasts, they were thriving cities. In a flash, they became desolate. Wastelands. In early August 1945, warfare changed forever when the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Japan, devastating the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and killing more than 100,000 people. America's immediate goal was to hasten Japan's surrender and World War II and avoid further allied casualties. But it also wanted to showcase to the world the Soviet Union, in particular, the hugely destructive power of its new technology. The images of Hiroshima and Nagasaki below illustrate the power, what Japan's Emperor Hirohito called in his statement of surrender a new and most cruel bomb, Hiroshima, before and after. Aerial view of Hiroshima, Japan. What Japan's Emperor Hirohito called in his statement of surrender a new and most cruel bomb Hiroshima before and after. On August 6, 1945, at 8.15 a.m., the crew of the B-29 bomber Enola Gay dropped the first wartime atomic bomb over Hiroshima, Japan, a bustling regional hub that served as an important military communist center, storage depot and troop gathering area. The bomb, codenamed Little Boy, detonated with on Estimated 15,000 tons of TNT, destroying five square miles of the city and directly killing some 70,000 people. Final casualty numbers remain unknown. By the end of 1945, injuries and radiation sickness had raised the death toll to more than 100,000. In subsequent years, cancer and other long-term radiation effects steadily drove the number higher. Three days after the destruction of Hiroshima, another American bomber dropped its payload over Nagasaki, some 185 miles southwest of Hiroshima, at 11.02 am. Not the original intended blast site, Nagasaki only became the target after the crew found that city, Kokura, obscured by clouds. The Nagasaki explosive, a plutonium bomb codenamed Fat Man, weighed nearly 10,000 pounds and was built to produce a 20 to kiloton blast. Its destructive force wiped out about 30% of the city. Some 60,000 to 80,000 people died in Nagasaki, both from direct exposure and long-term side effects of radiation. Please tell me in comments how you like this video. Thanks for watching.